Our next speaker is Dr. Clyde Helms, a professor of radiology and surgery at Duke University. Uh, he received his medical degree at uh, University of Texas in San Antonio. His uh, internship uh, was at uh, Travis Air Force Base in California. His residency in radiology at UCSF in the great uh, UCSF uh, radiology division. Uh, his fellowship was in skeletal radiology at UCSF. He's published more than 200 journal articles, approximately 200 book chapters, and 21 books. And he's going to give us a talk today on uh, basic imaging and arthritis. Is MRI the new paradigm? Dr. Helms. You know, it's funny. Um, radiology residents think imaging for arthritis is easy. They learn the classic patterns. They, uh, uh, they memorize them. They look at classic examples when they take their oral boards, uh, which I sometimes participate in. They all do well at it. Uh, and they think it's easy. Uh, and for them it is. Uh, but as you know well, it's not easy. And they learn that very quickly when they go into practice or when they do fellowship. They have to start looking at real cases, not just classic examples. And they learn that, in fact, the classic examples are really outnumbered by the exceptions in more cases than not. We have a twice-monthly conference at Duke with the rheumatologists where they show us uh, some classic cases and some difficult cases uh, for daily work basis. And it's very frustrating. We often see what we think are classic examples, give them all the findings, and it has nothing to match at all clinically. And it seems that happens more often than not, and it really frustrates our fellows and sometimes our residents. And it almost renders the x-ray just another lab test. And in fact, in no other area of uh, radiology do I find that we give less help to a group of specialists, rheumatologists, than in uh, imaging arthritis. Uh, and it is frustrating. Uh, you all were given a book by John Stone that I've been looking at some this afternoon, outstanding book, Pearls uh, and Myths in, uh, in Arthritis, and had 126 contributors, over 90 rheumatologists, pediatric and adult, uh, four or five, six orthopedic surgeons, even a dentist, not a single radiologist, not one. <laughs> now, am I offended by that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> And in fact, I think it's appropriate. We have very little added value. We're like another lab test to the rheumatologist, and I, and I appreciate that. Now, has MR changed that? Well, to some degree. Uh, it's been said, and I know you've heard, that uh, ultrasound is to the rheumatologist uh, like the stethoscope is to the cardiologist. And I think there's some truth in that. Well, I would say that MRI is to the rheumatologist like the three-vessel angiography is to the cardiologist. Now, not all patients that go to a cardiologist, in fact, very few, need a three-vessel angiogram. And not all patients, in fact, very few, that go to you need MRI. The trick is finding out which ones need it and which ones don't. And I'm not sure I can give you a formula for that. It's still evolving. We're learning our way. And I'm going to show you lots of cases where MR made the diagnosis. I'm going to show you a lot more where it really wasn't necessary. It was wasted resources. Now, radiologists are used to making the diagnosis. It's a fracture. It's not a fracture. It's infection. It's not. It's a tumor, and here's what kind it is. But we get to arthritis, and we hem, and we haw, and we're not sure. And often, as I say, it's not helpful, and it's frustrating for you and us. MR has changed that some. But in many instances, uh, it hasn't, and it's still uh, we've got a ways to go, as I'll show you. If you're going to get an MR, recognize it as you do, that it's expensive. So let's get the best one you can, because it doesn't matter if you have a poor quality MR from a low field strength magnet and a wide bore, and the patient's very comfortable and happy, but it's terrible image. That costs the same as a high-priced MR that's very good quality, that gives lots of information. And it doesn't matter if it's read by a musculoskeletal trained radiologist or a general radiologist, it costs the same. So you might as well get the best you can. It's going to cost you the same either way. You need to have the surface coil, and not everybody who's doing imaging uses surface coils because they're expensive. At Duke, we have an orthopedic surgery group that we read for in private practice. They own their own magnet, but they don't have a wrist coil because coils cost twenty to $50,000 added on. 
And although they'll do a wrist maybe every day, maybe every couple of days, it's not arthritis, it's orthopedic surgery. And they don't feel they need that kind of quality perhaps. But it's a huge difference than the images we give them at the university because we have wrist coils. Make sure you have a surface coil, a wrist coil, if you're looking at the wrist or you're not gonna get good information. You need to have a high field strength magnet. That usually means 1.5 or above. It doesn't necessarily mean a three Tesla magnet. If you're looking at arthritis in the wrist and hand, don't get both. We used to do that in the foot and ankle. And you have a large field of view and your resolution was too poor to really see the detail that you needed to see to make the diagnoses necessary. So we typically will get the wrist or we'll get the fingers, but not both. The things we're gonna talk about, start with osteoarthritis. There's not a lot that MR is gonna offer for osteoarthritis. The chronic, or the, the classic hallmarks, of course, are sclerosis, osteophytosis, joint space narrowing. Joint space narrowing will be ubiquitous throughout this. So really what we're looking for is osteophytes and sclerosis, you don't need MR for that. Now there's some areas where osteoarthritis is subtle, unusual, atypical. And there's some, some role for, uh, for MR in that, no question about it. This is an example where at first glance, difficult to see exactly what we're looking at. It's just a coronal of the wrist, straightforward. But this is osteoarthritis at the lunato hamate. And unless you had a musculoskeletal radiologist looking at, at this, they likely wouldn't even find the diagnosis. Lunato hamate joint right here is not a very common place to have degenerative disease. But if you lose cartilage here, usually post-traumatic, single event, but not necessarily, this presents as ulnar-sided pain. And many of these patients have gone on to have surgery on the triangular fiber cartilage, which is right next to it, and on a clinical exam, almost indistinguishable from this. But we can make this diagnosis easily with MR, especially with the right history, ulnar-sided pain. Very difficult to see this on plain films, only occasionally will it show up. Completely different treatment, though, than TFC abnormalities. Same thing for ulnolunate impaction. This is typically associated with positive ulnar variants. The TFC is almost always affected, and we get changes on the ulnar side of the lunate. These can be seen with plain films when they're more advanced. Treatment for this is gonna be an ulnar shortening and repair or debridement of the TFC. But MR is usually necessary to see this. Another example, again, changes on the ulnar side of the lunate. Positive ulnar variants. You may or may not see this with plain films. You'd see the ulnar variants, but you likely wouldn't see this because it's not cystic or erosive or degenerative at this point. You also wouldn't appreciate the TFC tear, which can be easily seen with MR. Very unusual type of osteoarthritis. It's not well known to most radiologists, but it's fairly well known to rheumatologists. Rapid destructive osteoarthritis. We see several cases of this a year occurs almost exclusively in the hip, sometimes in the shoulder. 75-year-old woman with advanced degenerative disease, not unusual at all. However, four months prior, it was almost normal. More typical example is seen here where it almost looks iatrogenic. It's so straight, just chopped off. Here she was just some months before, perfectly normal. Rapid destructive osteoarthritis. Does MR play a role in this? No, not when you have a plain film like this. But sometimes we have the MR instead of the plain films. And we've recognized that when we have this straight pattern, this is not osteonecrosis with collapse. It's not ever that uniform. This is not gonna be gout or CPPD, although that's been hypothesized as a cause of this. This is typical for rapid destructive osteoarthritis. It's not a Charcot joint, which has also been thought to be in the differential. It's not dis subluxed or dislocated. But again, very unusual. This is an unusual example in the shoulder. When you get this kind of destruction and deformity, smooth margins, 
that's the 